son-in-law, and he had, it was Christmas time, <laughs> it was Christmas time, and, and he, had, he had gotten a Christmas present for his wife and his kids and father-in-law and his parents, and, and for his mother-in-law, he gave her a cemetery plot. Obviously, the mother-in-law, she wasn't too thrilled or excited and certainly wasn't too grateful about it. And so uh, the next Christmas rolled around, and he didn't get, the son-in-law didn't get the mother-in-law anything for Christmas. And she said, well, how come you didn't get me anything for Christmas? And he said, well, you didn't seem too grateful because you didn't use what I got you last year. <laughs> I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. All right, so now you now y'all are better. So turn over to Psalm chapter 23. Many, 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 many of you have probably heard this before. Psalm 23, and I bet you you can tell me how it starts. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So if you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 23. Uh, if you don't have one, we'll have the scriptures on the screen for you. But Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, this is a really familiar passage of Scripture for a lot of you. And I wanted to spend some time on it uh, today and looking at it because every single one of us, I don't care who you are, what your background, uh, how spiritual you think you are, every, every one of us have gone through some stuff. There's been stress in our life. There's been fear coming to our life. Uh, some of you may have been dealing with some stuff this last week, last month, even this morning on the way to church, just fearful about some things and stressful about some things. And, and it's interesting because, man, God, he understands us. He made us. He understands the things that we go through. And he's given us instructions on how to, to counter fear and how to deal with stress uh, because that's, that isn't the thing that he wants us to be dealing with. We've all been actually called to live the life of faith, not the life of fear. But here in Psalm 23, he tells us that, you know, uh, this life is not going to be just walking on a bed of roses and, you know, walking through the clouds. A lot of people think that when we talk about faith, it means uh, going through life and no cares, no pressures, no troubles, no worries. But that's not the truth at all. Actually, Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, in this world you will face trouble. But then he threw in a big but. He said, in this world you'll face trouble, but I have overcome the world, so be of good cheer. Be encouraged. And so the wonderful thing about this life that we get to live is that even though we're in this world and the troubles of the world come against us, it doesn't mean the troubles of the world have to overcome us. And so that's why Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be encouraged. Put a smile on your face. If you're frowning, remember, meet Patty. He said, put a smile on your face. Be encouraged because, hey, we've got this. We've got this. And so you see the theme through, running throughout the New Testament is that we always win. God, he always leads us in triumph in Christ. We always overcome. We're more than conquerors. It's all about winning, 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 winning. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. The apostle Paul said that. That's the way God set this thing up is for you and I to win in life. But here in Psalm 23, I want you to notice what he said. He said, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, you shall not want. Now, there may be things coming, coming against you uh, and, and, and causing some, some wants and needs and desires, but whatever that is, whatever the hole that is, he's telling you that the Lord, he's your shepherd, he's your protector, he's your provider, right? He's your source of strength. He's a sustainer and the lifter up your head. He's your helper. He will take care of all the wants and the needs. He said, I shall not want. So in the midst of anything that's going on, whether it's health or whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, you need to keep that in mind. I will not want. I shall not want because God, he is there with me to protect me, to help me, to provide for me. And this is the theme of the Psalm of David. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. In other words, even though there may be stress and mess all around you, you can still be at peace. Guys, there ought to be a difference between the Christian and the unbeliever when it comes to the stresses and the trials of life. 
Because when you got God on the inside of you, your outlook of the, of the circumstances of life should be a whole lot different. It should, it should be from that standpoint that, yeah, there's some stuff coming against me, but you know what? I'm not going to get down. I'm not going to get depressed. I'm not going to get afraid. I'm not going to get stressed because you know what? God's with me. And that's what, that's what the psalmist here, David, is talking about. The Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. And he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. So he's saying, hey, there's going to be some stuff, but you know what? I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. And why, was he, why did he say he wasn't going to be afraid? Why? He said, I'll fear no evil for what? You are with me. And you, can see, you will see this from Genesis to Revelation. It's constantly through there that the answer for fear is the fact that God is here. He is here with you. So anytime you start to get afraid, anytime you start to get stressed out, that is your blinking red sign that you have forgotten that God is with you. In other words, what's going on is you have kicked God off the throne and you have sat down in his spot and you are now acting as God in your life. And you're trying to take on uh, and, and provide the answers. You're trying to take on and provide the victories. But that is not what faith is all about. Faith is about casting your cares upon the Lord for you know he cares for you and he is your shepherd. And that's why David said, I, even though I'm going through junk, even though I'm going through mess, I will not fear, I will not get stressed, I will not be afraid for God is with me. And he said, your, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So what was the purpose of the rod and the staff? Well, the purpose of the staff you know, it's got the, looks like a, a big candy cane, if you don't know what the staff. The purpose of that staff was, was not only to, to help pull that sheep out of a bush or, or to keep that sheep from falling off a cliff to pull him in and pull him close, but you also had that rod, and that rod was not to beat the sheep. That rod was to beat off predators. So when, when God is with you, it ought to change your outlook and your perspective on life. And it's not that we won't face stuff, but it's the fact that when we face stuff, I won't get stressed, I won't get afraid, I won't get anxious about it, and instead of popping a pill, I'm going to pop some praise out of my mouth and then remind myself that God is with me. And because God is with me, even though I may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to pitch a tent and stay there, I'm going to go on through. And I'm going to come on down the, out the other side still winning. Still winning. Why? Because God is with me. And if God is with me, I can't be defeated. I can't be put down. I can't be chained down. I can't be locked down. Because if you're going to come against me, you have to come against him. And if you come against him, you ain't going to win. You ain't going to win. That's right, Carl Jr. He said, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They bring me comfort. They bring me peace. And he said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I love this. Because again, you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. You, you may be going through some trials, going through some mess, going through some troubles. But even in the midst of that, there's always provision. So see, when all those around you are going through the junk, it doesn't matter if the economy goes down. It doesn't matter if there's a plague running rampant throughout the country. Even in the midst of that, it's like you are the bubble boy. Anybody ever saw Seinfeld, the bubble boy? It's like you are the bubble boy. And, and God, he is your shield and he is your protector. And even in the midst of the junk, you're protected. You, you, you've got peace, you've got safety, you've got refuge, you have provision. Actually, if you look at the word salvation in the Greek, the word salvation is the Greek word sozo. And that Greek word sozo, it literally means this. It means salvation. It means health. It means prosperity. It means safety. And it means protection. So when you say that I'm saved, you're also saying I'm healed. You're also saying I'm prosperous. You're also saying I'm, I'm safe and I'm protected. That's what salvation is all about. It's a, it's a package deal. It's a package deal. And this is what David is getting at, is that even in the midst of this world and all the stuff in this world, I am provided for, I am protected, I am supplied for, and because I know that God is with me and because God's with me, all his stuff is here with me, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be stressed. I don't have to be anxious because God's got this. He's, he's got this. 
He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. See, everywhere that you go, you ought to be expecting good things to follow you. See, we, we need to make a, a change in our perspective. We're trying to get somewhere and hoping something good happens to us when we get there. No, you need to understand that when God is with you, you're taking goodness and mercy wherever you go. So in other words, we can walk into a dark place and be the light. Not hoping that while I'm going through the dark place and the light shows up, you need to understand that you have a supply because of who's with you. That when I show up, God shows up. When I show up, peace happens. See, you can change the atmosphere in your home. You can change the atmosphere in your business. You can change the atmosphere where you go because you're taking God with you. And God is not the author of confusion and stress and fear. He is the author of peace. And so you can bring peace into a situation. You can change a situation. You can change the, 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 the attitudes of those that are around just by you showing up. Because when you have the attitude that when I show up, goodness and mercy comes too, then all of a sudden I go from having a, a, an attitude of a victim and all of a sudden I've got the attitude of a victor. Because when I show up, victory showing up. When I show up, salvation showing up. When I show up, prosperity, peace, healing, provision is showing up because God's with me. Go through, I challenge you, go throughout the Old Testament, go through the New Testament, and look how many times God says this, don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be afraid because I'm with you. Don't be afraid because I'm with you. He told it to Moses. He told it to Joshua. Don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be afraid for I'm with you. And you'll find that many times when God was making these statements, it was because these people were about to be sent out to do the absolute impossible. But see, uh, you can do the impossible when God's with you. Because when God moved in you, uh, he didn't come alone. He brought the U-Haul. And all that he is came with him and got on the inside of you as a believer, as someone who's united with Christ. See, see us Christians today, we, we've got this idea, we, we understand a teeny bit that, you know, that the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of me, that I'm born again, this and that. But man, you got to go past that and understanding that when God's in you, God's in you. When he's there, all of him is there. Everything that he is, is there. That's why we don't have to be afraid. That's why we don't have to be afraid. He said, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Look, I want you to see a couple of these. Look at Isaiah uh, chapter 49 and verse 10. If you don't know where Isaiah is, it's in the Old Testament. If you can find Matthew, go back a few pages and you'll find Isaiah. Pretty decent size book there. But Isaiah 49 and verse 10 Notice what God says here. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He said, I'm not only going to be with you, but I'm here to also uphold you and strengthen you and help you. Remember, the answer for fear is what? God is here. And yet it's not the fact that just God is there, but if he's there, he's there to do something. He's there to help you. He's there to deliver you. He's there to protect you. He's there to strengthen you. He's there to provide for you. And that's what God said. He said, don't be afraid. I'm here, and I'm going to hold you up with my right hand. I'm here to help you. So don't be afraid. So again, the answer for fear is what? God is here. So the next time you start to get afraid and you get anxious and you get stressed, you need to remind yourself, I am not alone. In other words, you just need to stop and you need to take a breath and remind yourself, God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. And the more you start to think like this and talk like this, the more of a reality it will become to you. And the fact that God, he's not just some figment of your imagination. He's not just out there somewhere, but he's here with me. That he's not only with me, he's for me, and he is in me. He said, don't be afraid, I'm with you. Don't be afraid, I'm with you. And so that's just one of, of many, many, many in the Old Testament. But you can also see, also see a great one in the New Testament. And it's over in Hebrews chapter 13. Verses 5 and 6. And this is Jesus speaking to you and I. And it's so good. 
Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 and 6 says, Jesus himself has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not what? I will not fear. What can man do unto me? So see, when you understand that God is with you, all of a sudden you go from being afraid, you go to getting in faith and getting really bold. Getting really, really bold. I mean, you know, when you, when you know that the person that's with you is a lot bigger than the person against you, you'll get really bold. Huh? Get really bold. Get really bold. He said, the Lord's my helper. Why should I be afraid? Guys, this is, this is basic of the basic of the basic elementary deals in Christianity, but we have to have an understanding God's with me that he's in me, that he's for me. And the more of a reality that that becomes to us, then it won't matter what bad report that you're given, what bad circumstance you face, you won't be freaking out like everybody else. Because you know, number one, you're not alone. Number two, uh, God is with you because God is with you. He's there to provide for you and protect for you. He is there to help you. And then so when, when you know that God's with you and you know he, he's there with you with all his stuff, it makes you a little cocky. It, it'll make you a little bold and you get a little cocky and you might start saying some stuff that when it comes out of your mouth and in your head, it goes, whoa, why did I say that? Why? Because you'll start calling the devil out. And when the devil pops up, he starts whispering in your ear and saying, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not going to be able to pay that bill. You're not going to get healed. He starts telling you all that stuff instead of listening to that and saying, well, you know, you might be right. No, you'll tell him, get back and shut up. Step back and shut up because God is with me. Therefore, I don't have to be afraid. Why? Because the answer for fear is what? God is here. God is with me. He's right here. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. You need to write that one down. I'll never leave you, and I will never forsake you. I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. And yet, how many times do you hear Christians say, and, and of course, we've all been there and done that, and I've been there too, but how many times have you heard Christians say, God, where are you? I mean, don't you see what I'm going through? Where are you at? Don't you see what I'm experiencing? Where are you? Well, but if we're getting to that point, then it's a reminder again, it's the blinking red sign that I have forgotten. The reality of God being with me is not where it needs to be. It's not where it needs to be. It's not where it needs to be. It's not where it needs to be. <clears throat> so what do you say in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 again? We're being real elementary here. He said, I'll boldly say, remember there's boldness. And there's confidence in knowing that God is with you. And so, you know, you could go through the Old Testament and look at all these different individuals that accomplish these big, bad, great things, impossible things, things that we look at and we're still like, wow, man, that's amazing. You know, remember the story of Samson, you know, big, big, bad Samson? Isn't it interesting when you read through the story about Samson, you find that, you know, it says when the Spirit of God would come upon him, all of a sudden, I mean, like he's the Hulk. And he's breaking stuff and tearing stuff up. I mean, just superhuman strength. And then at the end of his life, when he fell into the trap of that good-looking woman, thank God for women, but sometimes they get you in trouble. And Samson got in trouble because of the pretty girl. He got in trouble, and he told her the secret to his strength. And the Bible says that when she shaved his head, when he woke up, he didn't know that God wasn't with him anymore. And he got up to do what he normally did, and his strength was gone. His strength was gone. And, and the Bible says that he was weak just like any other human being. So that was sad for him, but that gives us a wonderful truth in that when you know that God is with you, it makes you stronger than the people out there that don't have him. In other words, the things that in this world that are coming against you that don't have God with them, that means you are in a superior position, that you've got superhuman strength there. You've got more than enough grace, more than enough ability, more than enough strength to get through anything because God's with you. Because God's with you. And so to make you bold and to make you, 
make, make you strong and it'll make you courageous. It'll make you get in faith. It'll make you get in faith. But when it comes to this word faith, a lot of us have gotten it kind of messed up because we, we think that uh, th this, this faith fight, so to speak, is us trying to make things happen. Anybody heard that phrase, the fight of faith? Well, it comes from the, in the Bible. It's 1 Timothy. And, and Paul is encouraging Timothy. We'll put it up here for you. 1 Timothy chapter 6. He said, I want you to fight the good fight of faith. I want you to lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called. And you confess the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. He said, I want you to fight the good fight of faith. I want you to fight the good fight of faith. But you have to understand that, that the fight of faith is not a fight of trying to get the victory to happen. The fight of faith is fighting from a standpoint of the victory already occurred. Or you could say it like this. The fight of faith is not trying to make it happen. The fight of faith is fighting not to fight. Let me say that again. The fight of faith is the fight not to fight. Let's say it one more time for the, all the confused looks. Let's say deer caught in the headlight. What do you mean? The fight of faith is the fight not to fight. In all actuality, the fight of faith is the fight to stay in rest, to stay at peace. The fight of faith is, is, is in actuality the fight not to fight, not to try to make it happen, not to try to get the victory because we're not fighting from a stance of trying to get the victory. We're, we're fighting from the stance that we already have the victory and I just need to stay in faith about it. I need to stay in peace about it because I know God's got this. Because see, when you're fighting and you're trying to make things happen, that means number one, you, you don't know that Jesus already won. And so you're trying to make it happen on your own. And if you're trying to make it happen on your own, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be mad. You're going to be tired. You're going to be upset. See, when you're getting stressed out about something, that's your sign I'm trying to do this on my own. When you're getting frustrated about things, that's your sign I'm trying to get this done on my own. When you're stressed and afraid about something, that's your sign I am not aware that God is with me right now. But as soon as you get really, uh, really bold and, and courageous about something, it's because you became aware that God is with me. You'll, you'll see it throughout the Bible that when people are afraid, it's because they forgot that God was with them. And then when they got bold and strong and courageous, it was because they knew God was with them. You could go back to the story of, of David and Goliath. Remember what David said when he was running after Goliath? He said, the same God that was with me when I killed the lion and I killed the bear is the same God that's with me right now. And so while all his brothers and all these grown burly men are sitting back there and eating their little cheese sandwich and not wanting to go after the giant because they didn't have a relationship with God, they didn't have a experiences with God, they didn't know God was with them, but David said, God is with me because God is with me. I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed it to the birds and I'm going I'm, I'm to whip the rest of you Philistines too. <clears throat> Why? Because David was some great warrior? No. Bible says he, he was a teenager, late teens, something like that. And he came out there not with a sword, didn't come with a shield. He had some rocks. And he said, I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to defeat the whole army simply because God is with me. Simply because God is with me. So that means that when, when the giants of life come into your life, you don't turn around, tuck tail and run away. What you want to do is you put the word of God in your mouth, remind yourself that God's with me, and you run after those giants. But what's happening is when the giants of life show up in most of our lives, we're not running after the giant. We're falling down on our knees and crying and saying, God, why did you let this happen to me? God, where are you? And some of us are 60, 70, 80 years old, 80 years old been saved 50 and 60 years and still doing that. And you know what? It can happen in the blink of an eye just like that. You could have been a whole, spending a whole week in a, in a conference and something like that and had your mind on the Word of God and this and that, but all it takes is five or ten minutes of allowing your mind to get off the reality that God is with you, and all of a sudden the things of this world start to become more real to you, and all of a sudden then you go on from being a, a mighty, mighty man of God, then you go over to being a little wuss. And instead, you go from the place of, of declaring the victory, and all of a sudden you're over here and you're crying and whining and asking God, where are you at? 
Why? Because it doesn't take long. Because the devil, he is always there to whisper in your ear, you're not going to make it. You're not good enough. God isn't here. God left you. You, you messed up, you know. Remember this morning when you kicked the dog and you, you, you flipped the person off the cut in front of you on the way to church. You remember that? He's always going to be there to remind you of all these things. But that's when you need to remind him of who is with you. You need to back up and you need to shut up and remind the devil, God's with me. And because he's with me, you can't defeat me. Because actually, he's already defeated. He's already defeated. So let me give you an example. Let, let's see something. We'll close up here. I want you to look at David because we've all been here. We've all done that. And you know, the Bible says that David, God said that David was a man after his own heart. I mean, David was a beast, man. I mean, he's going out and, and conquering and having victory everywhere, and yet he was also had some, had some, had some, moral, <laughs> had some moral issues. Because this is also a guy who uh, killed a guy so he could have his wife. But the Bible says that, <laughs> that he was a man after his own heart. But I want you to see some, some raw emotions that are going through David's mind and in his life. In Psalm chapter 42, I want you to notice what it says here. Psalm 42 in verse 3, it says, Day and night... I have only had tears for food while my enemies are continually taunting me saying, where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession to the house of God. I was singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. And guys, we've been there. And that we've got some, some rough times going on in our life and we start thinking back to the good old days. But when you understand that in the life of a believer, in the life of one united with Christ, we haven't experienced the best of the best of days yet. Because the best day is always going to be the next day. We're going to have a better day today than we did yesterday, but tomorrow is going to be even better because I'm going to have a greater reality of God being with me. He said, oh yeah, those, those good old days, those days in the past, I got to do all these things. But then he says this, in verse 5, he says, why am I discouraged and why is my heart so sad? The King James Version says, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Man, if you're more familiar with that statement right there. Why so downcast, O oh my soul? Why are you so discouraged? Why are you so sad? And he said, but I'm going to put my hope in God. I'm going to praise him again, my Savior and my Lord. The voice translation says this, says, why am I so overwrought and why am I so disturbed? Why can't I just hope in God? Despite all of my emotions, I choose to believe and praise the one who saves me and is my life. In other words, sometimes you're just going to have to preach to yourself. Sometimes you can't sit there and wait till Sunday so you can have somebody preach to you. You know, you need to understand that in the New Testament, under this new covenant, as someone saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, that you are the prophet of your own life.